Don and his experimented over the years with making both out of readily available, inexpensive materials that are very, very light. The only problem is if you use a heavy boat when you're launching one of Don's boats, you just never take your hand off of it because it either floats away or the wind will blow it away. That's quite an amusing experience to have when you're used to boats that weigh 50 pounds that usually don't blow away on you. <laughs> what Don has overcome is how to enjoy boating and yet live in an area where it's very difficult to get boats in and out of storage. He lives in Brooklyn. And so Don will show you now how he has gone about uh, accomplishing his uh, tremendous diversity of boat building skills that he has. What I started with was um, the Gantt Talk with Outdoor Sports. It was a um, three bottom hard shine canvas top. And what I did was take what I liked about that, the general shape and some of the characteristics, and decided, okay, I don't need the extra. I don't need the extra freeboard. I don't need the size for some of the things. I wanted it a little bit longer for some reasons. Then it's the whole range from like a large adult to a small child. When you're starting to build a boat or think about designing a boat. Um, the one thing that you can't really change is your rear end size and your foot size. So you have to start, okay, it's got to fit around you. If you think, okay, most boats, well, they do, and then there's some extra, but my feeling is, um, why do you put the extra? Just design it for yourself or design it for the person you're building. The easiest way that I find is just design it full size. You just imagine it full size, so then you get stringers, you get a cross section. There's the cross sections where your feet are, where your rear end is, where the behind you is. You just put the stringers out along it, and then push them, pull them in, cut the things until it looks like it might work. And then you um, can either I did some just wrapping paper around it, but that was a little bit inaccurate. You um, can cut the pl plywood out if you pull the plywood boat out. Just wrap it around approximately, draw the line, cut that out, cut the mate out. It's really easy. This is um, my wife's boat. It's um, basically the same boat as the skin one. It's the same size, shape, and off this, the skin boat's taken from it. But what I found was uh, once you cut the freeboard and the extra length out of the Gantok, which this basically was, um, the whole thing fit on one 4x8 sheet of plywood. Like, to me, that's amazing. You can build the whole hull out of one 4x8. It's, it's not a lot of wood. It's, the, it's kind of tight. There's not a lot of extra. There, it's all ready to sew together. It just, once I realized that, you can float a person in one 4x8 and have a reasonable size boat. Okay, you sewn it together. Um, at one time I would drill all the holes, but just a sharp ice pick worked pretty good. <laughs> then the, um, sew it together. When your legs come back on, look at this one on the inside of the bottom that I just covered. And you'll see that um, I just put little copper wires in. Um, you all read Messing About in Boats, right? right. Everybody, right? Yep. That's the important thing. Um, they've been talking about what to sew the plywood together with. So we'll leave the pull, leave the ties in, take them out, and my best solution is, I think there's a piece of it there, it's, um, I was told it's grounding cable. Just, in New York it's easy, you just find it in the street and there's tons of it. Um, and just take the skin off it and then you have all this nice copper wire. And then just sew the boat together, glue it on the inside, let's see that later. You see all the ties. They just cut off with the wire cutters and can, with a big hand planer, you just knock all the little tips off and round off the chines.
the blue just stops off with the play. And the copper is nice because it, it just cuts nice and clean without dulling everything. Oh, you got to glue it together. Um, I use West System Epoxy, and that used to be my blue table. I still use the pump, but it doesn't work so good anymore. After having all the insides replaced and cleaned and jungle times. There's that first boat, that's Martha's boat. Insides glued together, the drums are being glued on, and the, these plywood boats, um, basically they take the shape with the one inside form. So I, the ties are on the outside, and all the wires are pressed on the inside, and it's laying the glass tape the epoxy and lay the cloth in. Also, this foam one. Um, one day I started to think about foam. And, um, what a great building material. It's cheap. Um, $30, I think, we built two boats. Um, except for the fiberglass and epoxy. But you just think of a shape and you put it together and you sand it out or carve it out. It carves with a bread knife. It, it's neat. And, um, you don't need to carry any flotation in a foam boat. It really doesn't need it. You can fill it all the way up with water, and it still paddles fine. Is it the blue star foam? Yeah, either blue or pink will work fine. Let's see. I haven't yet. I've got a crack in one of mine, but it's in the foam. It's not in the fiberglass skin. That's right, it's um, the foam. Um, I've tried glassing inside and outside on the first one. The second one, um, glassed inside and outside. The third one that I'm using now is the same design as this again. It's, it's taken off the same set of molds and it's glassed just on the outside. And except for where I sanded it too thin in one spot and it cracked. It really has had no problems. Both the spruce, where I like using a one inch piece, wouldn't make the curve. So a sculptor thread glued me in on, well you just cut little grooves in it, it'll curve a lot easier. And just, the, the trick is just filling it with a syringe with epoxy after. You still see the holes where the copper comes out? All right, you see one right in the bow there. You see where the screw gun holds the gun together while it's gluing. Then I um, plane it off. Um, you have to build a cockpit for the combing. Um, that's the way I do it. To me, it's the simplest. Um, one or one or two layers of wood to get the general shape. Um, this one's even simpler, I think. And then I'll um, clamp it together. Then you have this floating cockpit. Um, Deck's flexible. Don't try to peg it anywhere. Just let it float. So you look at this one. You can lift it up fore and aft, and it's still there's no reason to fasten it. It's Kevlar. I use that for reinforcing things. A series where I would reinforce underneath all the different things where I thought they'd break. And the ends of some of the paddles. Um, different ways of doing the deck beams. You see I'm gluing up the spruce again, trying to get it to conform to the shape that I think it's about and uh, then I did some. The deck stringer is the center deck thing. Because I wanted the low freeboard and a low deck, but I wanted room for my toes, so I split it in the Y shape up around my feet. So I designed the rear that's just after the cockpit. So it'll fit this hatch because I want a big watertight or a big 
Erkan part. So Bart Hathaway made the gray part, and I'm putting the deck on it. He does it a little bit different. But, um, I'm forcing this boat into a different shape. And there's the ribs. I'm just having fun with the grinder, grinding up the rib shapes. And there, there's the kind of shape that I want. Nice and low behind the deck, so you have something nice and low to lean back on when you stop it. When you heel, when you um, lean, it goes underwater good. You just lean forward, it dives good. If you can get someone to sell you a bottom, or get the bottom of a boat somehow, you can reform it. You can make it wider, shallower, narrower. Because the flexible fiberglasses, you can do a lot of different things with it, and then just put a deck on it, and make it any way you like, and you can build half the boat. And the hard part's done. I mean, or Actually, the deck is, it takes a lot of work to build a deck, but it's neat to have something to start with. And, well, that's nice. So I thought, I'll build something more fun that goes as fast as a speedboat. And I was real surprised, because it did. It, it very deceptive boat. Well, Kids liked it. It went fast, and I don't know, they, they just like going out on it. The Chappelle's book, Adney and Chappelle's Bark and Skin Boats of North America. And look at the bottom shape. Look at how nice and deep the sides are. Um, if you're thinking about building a boat, the first thing to do is to try everybody else's. You really should try a whole range of things around what you might like. And so I tried this one, it went for that to do, and it was very interesting to paddle because it would either sit on one side or the other. It just couldn't sit upright in it without paddling fast. So you stop and it would go right over on its side. Because it has a very narrow bottom and high sides. And that's the place that I use. Aircraft Spruce Specialty Company. You want, there's the telephone number. The bottom line there, Daycron, 3.7 ounce by 66 inches is $3.66 a yard. You can see this one, you can see the third chime starting about a third of the way back from the bow. Then I'll iron on the tape. And you'll trust that? Yes, yeah, with the last one. And this other. I, I crossed the, uh, my best boat, the one that yeah. I used to do in crossings, yeah. is just double sided tape. And it's been that way about four years. No problem. Um, when you tie on the now, what about, it takes a dent, though. What, what about uh, an all skin? In other words, if, if, we, if we skin the hull up to here with double stick, yeah. then put a double stick over that and, and put the deck on. I'm not sure about the double stick over that and what's that adhering to. The double stick does seem to adhere just right to a box. I think it will adhere to... I'm going to redo the break hole that I have. Uh, on, the, on this uh, done boat that I'm doing now, I was going to use tax on it. Tax and rubber cement. Why wouldn't you do the whole thing in one piece of paper? I don't know how. Just I'm only a reluctant seat. Wrap it around, <laughs> and if there's a little bit extra, just put a patch in it. Yeah, I'll show you how. I think whatever comes out of the machine straight. No, I think, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two operations. I'm going to do the hull. Yeah. Instead, of, instead of using the hull, you just put heat, put heat, and then you go with the iron? No. No. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do it yeah. one, though, um, without using the system. I think one of the ends has to be done by hand. You're then putting your hand out. So that the hole is out. Yeah. 
So the, the construction bit is different. It takes four hours yes. to sew yes. this by yeah. hand. Yeah. It looks like he's varnished it. Right? So that, oh. it's the way I sew. Well, it takes about ten minutes to do it. This particular one. So the zipper is what? The zipper is what you get not anymore. Before the shrunk, I see. Okay. It was used as a means to show that you had to take the skin. That was a long time. Now, oh, actually, actually, actually. Maybe it came at night. Uh, how do you adjust the trim? Bow up to bow down in these various bolts that you put. May I answer that for him? I'm sure. I don't know. I, don't I, know. I, just, I just came up with a new design uh, last fall, and I had the bolt all done except for figuring out where the fork was going to go. And I was waiting for somebody to come by so we could put it out in the swimming pool and I could have them uh, <laughs> tell me how she was trimmed. And nobody came. Jesus, I wanted to get going on this, on this thing. So finally, I, I took a mirror and propped it up at the edge of the pool and I got a paddle in front of the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> mirror wasn't big enough so that I couldn't just sit there and look at it. I had to paddle back and forth across it and measure, measure where the bow and where the stern was on the mirror. No boat is new. It's always an outgrowth of, sure. of something else. Yeah, and that one, I like the 14 foot 11 length. And it's off two previous boats out of the same pattern. So I knew where to put the rear of the cockpit. What do you simply use to trim it up or down? That's Your body. Easy. I use my body to the extent I can move it, but how about two or three of those you, bottles you were you talking you about before? Place. Okay, filled with water. Move. Oh, from your feet? That's absurd. Your eyes got us to make you a nice lightweight boat and then you're going to put some stones in it. Oh, Jeez, it's, 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 it's an interesting thing. If it's, uh, you have two and three liter water bottles, soda bottles, right? That It's wonderful. They're only worth a nickel apiece if you return them. But they're great for the boats because you fill them with water you just put them way up in the bow. As many as you think. And if the wind's really blasting, you load up the bow It'll dive under the waves, but it'll head on wind. It's it's really neat because the waves come right over, but the boat ends up. I'm, I'm dealing with uh, low freeboard boats, right? They don't rise up. Um, what I'm doing this for is to show all of you guys who are going to start with a wood bottom or fiberglass bottom, right? You can fill any kind of a bottom and put a deck on it. Um, you can use contact adhesive, you can use glue, or what is it? Well, you can get some glue from, from uh, aircraft glues. Yeah. You can nitrate, nitrate the butyrate. Get glue. Or, or if you plan on doing a series, and you don't like to spend a lot of time at it, you can use double-sided tape. But don't use the tape from the art store. Um, this is designed for putting truck bodies together with the truck panels. The boat that's been finished four years with this has had no problems. Is all that's holding this on. Then I tried the next one, the smaller kids boat with a quarter inch contact adhesive because I wanted to see if it would come apart. But it really has had no problem. And, and you find that uh, that will stand up to the, the shrinkage when you tuck the heat to the deck? Yeah. It doesn't start going up this uh, okay. the tape.